Okay, uh, I think we'll we'll go ahead and get started and um, hopefully a few other people will join us uh, as they're able. Um, so good evening, everybody, and welcome to our seventh and final Keeping It Local program for this academic year. And we know that especially April is really busy, so it's nice to see all of you uh, joining us tonight. I think most of you know, uh, I'm Sarah Kelly, a member of the program team. And we're especially excited this evening uh, because we're gonna have the chance to hear from our youngest members of the league, our student ambassadors, and learn more about the really impressive activities of the Youth Out Outreach and Civic Engagement Team or, or otherwise referred to as YOSI, uh, led by Rhonda Kurtz and Linda Meyer. So uh, just before we begin, um, just as a reminder, as I did just say a few minutes ago, if, if everyone could keep, please keep their um, microphone on mute unless you're speaking. And um, just as a reminder, this program is being recorded. Um, once Linda and Rhonda provide background about Yosi and the students introduce themselves, then I'm gonna be asking some questions uh, of the students. Um, and also I suppose Rhonda and Linda, if, if some questions come up, if you have questions, just please enter them in the chat box. And uh, Teresa is kindly monitoring the chat as, as I will uh, also. Um, then we're, we will wrap up by 8 p.m. And just a little bit before 8, then um, Trisha Crowley, our league president, is going to make a few uh, closing remarks. So I, at that point, I think we will. And Rhonda has already warned us uh, that she has very, uh, her internet <laughs> is, is uh, kind of maybe in and out. So if she all of a sudden leaves us, um, we'll blame it on the internet, but hopefully that won't happen. So anyway, well, I'll just turn it over to the two of you. Thanks, Sarah. Uh, I'm Linda, and uh, you can find Rhonda in the, one of the many faces on the screen also. Um, in, back in 2019, our local chapter was reflecting on the league's 100th anniversary and um, also the our local chapter, Champaign County League's 100th anniversary. And we identified a desire to introduce the league to a younger generation and to nurture the league for the next 100 years. So um, that's where we formed um, the youth outreach and civic engagement team. Uh, we sent this team was just a couple of us uh, at the beginning, and we sent electronic communications and phone calls to school officials and teachers at all the schools in our county um, with whom we had no prior history or relationship with, hoping that they would um, reply back and um, build a relationship and allow us to come into their schools and provide voter registration and, and education um, to the younger generation. So um, we did receive some response, uh, very little, but um, we were able to host a voter registration drives in a couple of uh, may maybe two or three high schools, usually over the lunch hour. So it was, you know, not very well um, uh, pinpointed to just the students that we really needed to see because a lot of upperclassmen don't stay on campus for, for lunch. Um, so, uh, but that was a good learning experience. But then the pandemic hit and um, where it really severed our communication with those people that we had built communication with. And as you can imagine, um, teachers and administrative staff were just really inundated with more pressing challenges in their daily life. And our teacher contacts um, reported that they were overloaded and students were really not engaged at the moment. And um, we would be better, it would be a better use of our time and our resources if we spent it on something other than online education and video presentation. Um, and, and that was feedback that we got after we briefly attempted um, a Why Vote video challenge um, in 2020. Uh, what we, we gathered some students that we just had personal relationships with and did some good videos. Um, but 
I'll be honest, the, the video on the social media world really didn't go anywhere because as a chapter, at that point in time, we didn't really have a social media presence at that time. Um, so for the rest of 2020 and early of 2021, we attended some online seminars uh, and workshops uh, offered through the league or resources that we received through the league and continued to learn a little bit more about the statistics of our younger voters. And we learned that a, they lacked access uh, to information about the registration and voting process that would really empower them to become fully engaged um, voters. And secondly, they are focused on, um, they, they are more focused on what others in their age group think and do. Therefore, they themselves are the best messengers to their peers. Um, and with that, I'll let Rhonda wrap up and bring us to the present where we are now. Sure. And I'm just going to add in one other sort of barrier or reason that um, having working with your peers was so important is that many um, uh, states um, have a voter registration process that really doesn't align with young people, right? And so it's, you know, online forms and paper forms, and they're uh, accustomed to doing all things on their phone. And so they would get um, discouraged. And so having a peer kind of walk you through that also was another thing that we found in the different training sessions that we attended. So we felt that was really important um, that we um, be able to foster student uh, leadership through um, um, voter registration and civic engagement. So not only talking about and educating about voter registration and education, but also encouraging um, the high school students to participate in all aspects of, you know, serving as like a uh, election judge or a deputy county register and, and, and then being members of the league were very important aspects that we wanted to encourage the students. So, um, and we also wanted to come up with a creative way for the students to um, get to work together and develop the program themselves. And so, um, um, and that they get to meet students from other high schools, as well as get to work with students maybe outside of their friend group at the high school where they're at. So, um, and then the last thing that was really important um, for everyone was to try to make this, um, uh, for the teachers and administrators, as well as the students, um, we worked really hard to um, try to streamline it, you know, take all the information in as we work with the students so that we could um, make a checklist and make this um, um, as, as streamlined as we could be. And so at this point, I'm going to kind of deviate just for a second, Linda, and uh, acknowledge our team members that are on this call who really helped us. And that's uh, Paula Strong and Natalie Frankenberg and Leslie Sherman, and we'll come back and thank them again, but they were instrumental in helping us uh, work with the students. Um, and then the students themselves add so much to what we're doing. So in the fall of 2021, we started the program. We had an application process where we, again, reached out to all the high school contacts um, and then our uh, league members to nominate students. Um, and we had 10 students um, who participated in the um, academic year of 2021-22. And um, three of those students returned for this year. And so this past year, we had uh, 12 students participating. Um, they've always been from the same four high schools and that's Champaign Central, uh, University Laboratory High School, Unity High School in Tolono and Urbana High School. And so um, that kind of brings you and how we meet. Um, we meet monthly um, and have most of the time uh, over Zoom to make it efficient for the students. And originally when we started, COVID was still pretty active. So that was one piece of it. Um, um, but this past spring, we've been able to meet in person and um, more often. Um, and that um, then we meet in subgroups, each of our team members are assigned a group um, from a high school and then they work with that high school to um, execute um, whatever event, voter registration, education event fits best for that high school. So that's kind of where we're at right now. So I don't know if you have anything else, Linda, to add. You're, you're muted, so. Yep, nope, that's great. Okay, so. 
Um, I do know that we have, um, out of our 12 ambassadors, we have three um, on the call today, uh, and we're so grateful and so proud of all of them. Uh -huh. um, and um, uh, I'll go ahead and uh, introduce them, unless, Sarah, you have another thing no. that you want to do first? Okay. Um, from uh, Urbana High School, uh, we have Keon and Eve. Uh, on the call. And then from uni high, we have Jonaki. Um, uh, we invited um, a representative from the other two high schools, but they're very, all of these kids are very active. And um, if not a soccer game or a softball game or in the play, things like that. Um, <laughs> so we're really grateful. Thank you to these three that are here today. And I know it's a really um hectic time right now in, in the academic world with ap exams and things of that sort going on right now so um i so proud of you and thank you for uh, being here today and with okay. that um i think what i'll do is um give them a chance to maybe uh say a little bit about themselves um uh, maybe a brief description of what uh, I guess I already said the school, but um, you can just re repeat that and and uh, what activities you're in and maybe a brief description about why you applied to the student ambassador program with the league. And we'll start with Keon. Are you okay with that, Keon? Could you say that question again? Sure. Um, uh, just introduce yourself, maybe tell what year in school you are what activities you're involved in, and a brief description about why you applied to the Student Ambassador Program. Um, hi, I'm Kian. Uh, you know the school I've been to, obviously. Um, I'm a junior right now. Uh, right now I'm involved in, uh, obviously, the Student Ambassador Program, but also uh, uh the interact civic engagement club at urbana and yeah so and uh, why why you uh applied to be an ambassador oh um it was so um from what i remember uh I, when looking at um, the description of uh, the ambassador, the student ambassador, it sounded interesting to me, and I felt like um, I could be doing something good. So that's why I applied. Thanks. And then Eve, do you want to go next? Sure. So I'm also from Urbana High School, and I'm also a junior. Um, I'm also in the Interactive Engagement Club, and I'm vice president. Um, I'm also on our school's thespian board, so I do a good amount of theater. Not right now, though, because I do the plays, not the musicals, which is what's happening right now. So highly recommend everyone goes and sees Bring It On, May 4th, 5th, 6th, 7th. <laughs> Sorry, just had to add that in. Nope, good job. It's my duty as being on the thespian board. Um, I'm also in tennis. I'm also in Habitat for, Habitat for Humanity. And one of the reasons that I applied for this ambassador program is because I really like being involved in like my school, but then also in our community. And so I found myself doing a lot of things inside of the school, but not doing a lot of things that were like external and that I could continue to be like a part of the same group of people that I'm like going to be familiar with when I go off to college and so I thought applying for the League of Women Voters would be a really cool way to start to get involved with this program and I plan to be involved with it for like the rest of my life so this was kind of just jump starting on it earlier. Thank you and I think we have Jonaki. Yeah I'm Jonaki. um I guess outside of the ambassadors program, I'm involved with uh, Quiz Bowl and Ma Liu and at school. I also play soccer and 
Um, I used to work at the state rep's office as an intern as well. And I got like, um, why I applied for the program, I was always like kind of interested in how like um, voting works and like the legislative process and all of that. I also like the community service aspect of it. And um, I applied just to like be able to learn from other high schoolers as well as like from the league and um, sort of like learn from all the resources that the league has about like how voting and all of that works. So, Thanks. And Jonaki is a senior at uni high school. And with that, I think um, you kind of know who uh, they are and are familiar with their faces. And I think Sarah has some questions. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you again for your introductions. And I just want to echo how grateful we are, um, given all the other activities you're in, that you're with us this evening. Um, so it's interesting to hear why you joined, um, decided to become a student ambassador. And I think it would be interesting to hear now. Um, that you've been an ambassador for one, this end of one year and possibly, are any of you on your second year? Or, or yeah, okay. So could you, would you mind sharing what, was it what you expected, first of all, and secondly, what have you learned? Or, and what, what were the surprises, I guess? That would be interesting. And um, who would like to go first? So. Eve, would you mind? Yeah, sure, I'll go. Okay. Um, so when I initially applied for the program, I was not really sure what to expect because I hadn't really heard much about the program and I didn't really know the details of like what I would be doing. Like I had a general idea, but I wasn't exactly sure. Um, but I've definitely been pleasantly surprised and I feel like I've actually gotten like so much out of this experience because I've found myself um learning a lot more about like the voting process and like becoming a lot more aware about all of that because I hadn't really heard anything about it before or like the process of voting like my parents used to take me to go vote at like our local church when I was younger but like that was all that I knew is that I got a sticker when my parents voted mm -hmm. and so I've learned a lot about like um the process, like the different types of elections. And then like, you don't have to be 18 to register to vote. I did not know that until I joined this program. I just feel like in general, I've gotten a lot more knowledge. And now I'm also more aware of all the barriers to voting and I'm better understanding the purpose of the League of Women Voters. Okay. Um, Kian, uh, would, would, do you have anything to add about um... What were your expectations and have there been any surprises or challenges that, and what have you learned? And just, um, yeah. Yeah. Um, when I applied, I, I sort of had an idea of, a, of what it could be like, you know, um, since, you know, I kind of read up about it. Um, but I do feel like it surprised me in a lot of ways. I felt like, um, I, I think one of my uh, great favorite parts was that there is a lot of community outreach that I really liked about it. Um, I think one of the biggest challenges for me was the um, how like to be a student ambassador and also balance other responsibilities. Um at least in my case, but um, I think I definitely learned a lot about the election system as well, um, how voting works in our county and in the state and in the country in general. I felt like I learned some very valuable information about that. A lot of stuff I did not know before until I joined the program. Okay, Jonaki, um, what are what are your thoughts? Yeah, um, I don't think like I had like any set like concrete expectations of like what um the program was going to be like. I kind of just applied um because my like high school social studies teacher sent out the link and it sounded like kind of interesting, but it's been like a really cool experience like 
um, learning how like how voting works, like not just like on the national level, but on like a county level. Um, we went like this year at least with like the other ambassadors to like go to a polling station and that was a really fun experience to learn about that and um yeah i think it's just been a really cool way to like engage with the community like we all put on like voter drives at our high schools and that was really fun for like encouraging other people to vote and like sort of informing them about that and like in that process like i also like got more educated as well about the process so so sort of following up on that, Janaki, how did the, did you find that your uh, fellow students responded um, to what you were doing? Did they, did they understand it? Were they supportive? Did they, were they suspicious or what? Did no, yeah. Yeah. What, what, what did people say when you told them you were doing this? Yeah, I think they were like pretty like um, excited about it. Uh, at least like at, at uni, like a lot of people already had registered to vote because um, like when they went to go their, get their driver's license, but like even like on the day of the election, I was like sort of hyping them up to go like go to like a polling station and vote, like even if it might be a bit of an inconvenience. Like, yeah, I, I don't think like I got a negative response, like either from administration or from my fellow students. So that was pretty good. Great, great. Uh, Keon, so um, you and Eva are at UHS at Urbana. So um, what what did you, what was the response you found from your peers? I felt like it was either positive or indifferent. So it was, there was not really any negative. There was not any negative responses to the voting. So um, I'd say a lot of it though was definitely indifferent. Um, not in like a bad way, but like kind of like, eh, you know, which I guess kind of makes sense. Um, I mean, a lot of high schoolers, you know, they don't really know much about politics, but I feel like more towards the end, they kind of got it. Started to understand a little bit more. I will say everyone did understand how to do like the forms and stuff, which is good um which i was really happy about great and eve yeah. uh yeah i would say like all the classes that i also registered people it was the same situation and like kian kian and i registered a class together and the, i think there were like a good amount of people who skipped the class and so it was kind of it was a little bit challenging with like urbana high school some of the classes like people are really disengaged. And so it's more difficult to have people one come to classes, but then also like pay attention to what you're saying. So we definitely, I feel like we had to be more engaging and like trying really hard or not really hard, but like trying to be extra engaging with our presentations. But in general, people were pretty responsive once you like went up to them. Like once I was um, going around and talking to each individual person, everyone was being receptive and responsive. And I think the people that didn't want to register, they just said, no, thank you and moved on. Mm -hmm. So everyone was pretty polite and accepting about it. Um, but also same as John Key, like I was kind of talking to friends and stuff and I'm a junior. And so I don't have a lot of friends that are like, have been eligible for that long. And so I've been hyping people up like also, but on their birthdays, I've been like, oh, you're 17 now. That means you can vote in the 2024 presidential election. So I feel like there's a lot of, you have to like directly talk to people to help them like move and like get out there and register or go vote. Were there any other challenges in terms of, of working with your teachers or did you feel like their, your teachers were very supportive and encouraging? Um, yeah. yeah, I think the teachers were pretty supportive and in one of the classes that I'm in, um, it's a senior class. And so we had done like a, a drive there where we went and presented and registered people. And my teacher posted it on Google Classroom like multiple times telling people, she was like, you need to bring this, you need to bring that, like be ready that they're gonna come and register people. So I think the teachers that I encountered were like very receptive. And when I skipped, when I was like, oh, I'm not gonna be in class today because I'm registering people. Everyone was like, wow, that's great. Um, but I would definitely say a challenge was like the class time. 
because when you have class time, you can't go up to each individual person and like kind of talk to them more and make sure that they're like being receptive, especially if it's a larger class. Um, but then, yeah, it was basically just like class time was a little bit challenging with registering like each individual person. If everyone had come to class and there were like 30 people, but yeah. Donna Key, do you have anything to add to that in terms of challenges? Yeah, I don't think we had like any like challenges per se. Like I guess like scheduling is always kind of a bit of a challenge in terms of getting people together and um, making sure that there's like no big event conflicting that day. But uh, like our administration was really supportive. Like they like let us use the library and everything to like set up our registration and we put posters around the school and they like announced it in the classes. So that was pretty nice. Yeah. Okay, anything, Kian, anything else to that question about challenges that you would like to add? Um, not much. I agree with Eve, though we did run into some email complications. So sometimes we had to go in person and talk to a teacher um, and make sure everything was good. But otherwise, it went pretty smooth, smooth mm -hmm. sailing. I'm curious if the students, did you get any sense whether the students' parents were active voters or did that ever come up? Just nobody ever. Yeah. I, I don't think that ever came up. Okay. But um, I'm not really sure. So at least in my case, I feel like there were some students that like you can tell somewhat that their parents might be engaged just from like my friends and then there's some my friends who, parents who seem kind of disengaged if that makes sense yeah so i don't know urbana's uh urbana's urbana so <laughs> we have lots of different people with lots of different backgrounds so like every class every single person has a super or not a super different background but there are definitely some people that are just polar opposites and like they're in the same mm -hmm. classroom so some people's parents are really really engaged mm -hmm. and those people were typically more receptive but then there's people who like their parents clearly aren't engaged and or maybe they don't live with their parents anymore and so it's kind of hard to like generalize when you're trying to like target all of these people like it's you have to do different approaches to each person so it was a little bit difficult to find one strategy that works for everyone just because everyone at Urbana is pretty different but also this is my first year doing it so I'm not sure and Eve it seemed like you found the most successful approach was one-on-one -on -one. you would do the the group and then but actually when you talk to people one-on-one -on -one, they were more likely to uh, follow through yes which is is true honestly with a lot of the voter registration that we do um, in the community. So um, I do have a few more questions, but there is a video that um, we have from the community coalition of a couple other students, and this might be a good time. And um, I think you have it loaded. Could Would you mind sh just sharing? It's very short, but um, it's, it's um, just to give you some exposure to a public speaking event that a couple of other students, and then we'll come back and finish up with a, a couple more questions. Okay, we'll do. Okay. I think this is what, three, two or three minutes, is that right? Yes. Okay. And Anne's going to share a screen. <clears throat> okay, hopefully you can hear it. Nope. Nope. <laughs> and we still can't hear it. No? No. All right. All right, hang on one second, please.
Hmm. Does anyone else have it loaded? Can't tell because I can't see my screen. Okay, sorry. Okay, you know why don't we come back? Um, yeah, let me let me work on it. You you okay? If if you do have it, um, yeah. Otherwise, what we can do is um, share the link when this uh, is okay. posted, the recording, and then you can look at it. It's it's very impressive, and and as you could see, Ann Prislin uh, was there also uh, introducing the students, and it, and it was they did a really terrific job. Um, one question that, um, you know, as, as mentioned in the very beginning, when Linda made her comments about the whole reason for starting the Student Ambassador Program is, you know, we've just celebrated last fall our 100th anniversary, and now looking to the future, I mean, you, our Student Ambassadors really are our future, and we would love to hear your comments about what suggestions you have for the Student Ambassadors Program, or for that matter, the, the League in general. In terms, as you can see, we tend to be a little bit older group, um, and that's why we're so thrilled um, to have you as our um, Student Ambassadors, but um, we would really uh, appreciate honest feedback that you have or suggestions. So, um, who would like to go? Johnny Key, do you mind if I ask a call on you first? Or yeah, you know, unless if you want to think about it, I can uh, I can call on Dion or Eve. I mean, I can I don't have like any like specific like feedback or like something that I like saw like really wrong going on, but like I guess like I, this is my second year doing it, and so like I like that. Um, I guess this is more like just a COVID thing, but it was nice this year. We were able to get together a few times in person and like do the meetings. Uh, last year it was like all virtual, like obviously because of the pandemic, but that was really nice, like getting together in person. Um, so I don't know if that like could continue next year. That would be like nice, but okay, Eve. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. Um, this is my first year doing it, but all of the meetings that we've been in person, I feel like it's been more discussion and we've had like more ideas shared. And so I thought that was helpful. But of course, like we're all very busy. And so I think maybe when school is more calm, that's a good option. But then like right now, it's like school's a little bit crazy for everyone. So Zoom is a nice option also. I would say something that I found to be a challenge when we were registering people and kind of like with connecting to like people in high school specifically is that a lot of people just aren't eligible to vote. And so when you approach them being like, hey, are you eligible to vote? Blah, 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 blah. I'll register you. And the person's like, I'm 16. I can't do this. My birthday is in nine months from now. And so then you kind of, you can kind of just like walk away and be like, okay, I'll talk to you in nine months. But I think something that would be really, really beneficial and helpful is that if there was more outreach to people that were younger, like even freshmen, if you were planting the seeds of like, you need to be like preparing, like to be involved in the um, mm -hmm. voting process and you need to like be aware of this because a lot of people just aren't aware um, and obviously you guys like have an Instagram and stuff. And so you guys are on social media, which is what a lot of people use. But I think just connecting more with people, even when they're younger, like I think middle schoolers are a little crazy. And so I don't think it would be worth the time to try to necessarily like deeply connect or like spread information to them. But especially like freshman year, people are really trying to get involved. And so I think if there was more outreach to people who are just like fresh in high school and you're kind of like, when you're older, like when you're a senior, you're going to have to register to vote. Here's what it's like. Here's what the voting process is like. And then especially with the presidential election coming up in 2024, everyone or basically everyone pays attention to that. So I think connecting to people who are younger in some kind of way is a really good idea because I know like I'm telling my brothers about that now, but like I, you know, like just student ambassadors can't talk to everyone and it's would be helpful. I think maybe if there were more student ambassadors from each grade, 
because then it helps to spread it through the grades so that when people are a senior and they're like busy with college applications or figuring out what they're doing after applying, they'll like already know, like it won't be new information and they'll already know that they're going to be voting or getting registered. And I think that would just be really, really helpful. Mm. So, Excellent. <laughs> Kian, uh, do you have any suggestions for how to improve the Student Ambassadors Program or any suggestions for our league in general? Um, I agree with a lot of what you said. I would also say I feel like um, something that I think the student ambassador program could expand a little bit is the social media utilization. Um, we did try out some some of social media utilization um, uh, a couple months ago, and I feel like um, it got. Um, at least when I reposted, we all reposted stuff on our Instagram account. And then at least when I reposted stuff, um, uh, it did, people asked me about it. And I feel like it could be beneficial in the future. We did more stuff like that for like voting events and uh, community events the league is associated with. Do you get receive any credit class credit for your involvement? Any yeah. of you? No. Okay. Do you feel like that would be an incentive, or do you think that there's enough incentive just uh, by what you're learning? Or are there other ways that we could entice people to get involved? Um, personally, I don't think the getting class credit thing like would have been super appealing. Okay. For me, I think it was more of just like a trying to get involved, but also I don't know because there's like a there's the unweighted weighted credit, and some people really care about that, so that might actually be a deterrent for like some people. I I don't know. It's kind of a complicated thing, and it's school based. I'm not sure. I'm not sure how other ambassadors feel. Okay. Um, one thing that we've been doing as a league is we've been doing some outreach to the rural community that we've started, um, and it's something I, that we're hoping to continue. Um, do you think it would really enhance the program if we had more student ambassadors from the smaller schools? I know we um, Tolono is involved, but if we were able to, uh, and not necessarily smaller, Muhammad is a big school, um, but if we were able to get ambassadors from the other schools, do you think that would really enhance the program? And because you've, I think you all talked about it was great to meet the other students that you didn't necessarily otherwise know. Is that correct? So is that is that something that you would encourage us to continue down that path of just, um, I know Leslie put in the chat um, just, um, about uh, a challenge was getting responses and scheduling with administrations at the schools. So, you know, because there's so many demands on the, the administration and the teachers. So that's something I guess is a challenge for us to find the right uh, person to connect with. Um, and that's maybe something we as a league need to, <laughs> I, I know some of us have been talk, doing as much as we can to, to find out who those contacts might be in schools. And, and just like you said, you're doing it one-on-one -on -one with people. That's probably what we need to continue doing also. And then uh, let's see, Linda added a comment that civics is required course for graduation. Uh, our question at what grade is this offered and what do they cover in the class? Um, can any of, of the three of you, do you? Um, at Urbana, I think civics is offered when you're an upperclassman or you might be able to take it at any grade, but I think people typically take it when they're a junior or a senior and mostly seniors take it. Have you had that course yet, Eve? I haven't. Oh, okay. I'm taking it next year. 
Okay. I, it'll be interesting. I, I'm, I'm glad you're returning. I, I hope you return as an ambassador next year. Um, it'll be interesting to then you have this knowledge already and be able to see is, are they covering this in the class? Um, and how, and if they are, how the presentation, how we present it versus how you learn it, how they present it, um, you know, how well it sticks, you know. Um, I can comment a little bit. Uh, I am taking uh, civics right now, actually, so I can comment a little bit. They are definitely teaching us about uh, a lot of the, um, like the difference between elections, for example. They are teaching us that. Um, now with how to like sign up for voting, they don't teach us that, but they do cover like the difference between elections and like the difference between the federal and state governments how that works. Well, that's something that, that uh, we've discussed in our program team may be trying to get more information next year regarding um, civics um, in the schools and how we can, you know, better support that. So, um, Anne, did, uh, did Anne Panthen, you have the video? Yes, okay. I, think, so, I think I have. Great, it. we'll try it again here and hopefully we can hear the audio too. Okay. Hopefully, yeah. Here from League One Voters. Thanks, Tracy. Um, everybody know there's an election coming up? Yep, okay. And it's really important because it's all local. It's all the folks that make decisions that affect us every day. There are handouts in the back that my friend Carol will help you grab if you want that will tell you all the facts. But the most important thing are the two people I have with me. These are two of our student ambassadors. They're from Central High School. And this spring, the student ambassadors registered 132 students to vote. <laughs> At Champaign Central, Urbana, Tolono Unity, and University High, and in total, since the program started in the spring of 2022, the ambassadors have registered 336 students. I want to introduce you to Nessa and Faith, and they're going to tell you a little bit about their stories. Hi, my name is Nessa Blyle. I am a junior at Champaign Central and a student ambassador for the League of Women Voters. I knew nothing about the League of Women Voters when I was nominated to be an ambassador, but found more information as to what the role of student ambassador entailed. I wanted to get involved after my family and I became survivors of the, sh the Highland Park 4th of July parade mass shooting. I decided that I wanted to take real action to make a tangible difference. I am too young to use my voice at the polls, but I could encourage others to use theirs with this opportunity. I have always posted political th content to my Instagram stories and used my voice on social media, but realized that this was a way for me to reach more than a couple hundred people who view my social media posts. At school, Faith and I went into classrooms to register seniors to vote. We presented nonpartisan information about registering and the process of voting. Since we are both juniors and we're talking to seniors, I was a little bit nervous that they wouldn't want to take us seriously or disregard the information we were providing because of the age difference. In reality, the seniors were very attentive and eager to learn about voting. It is very important to provide young people with accurate nonpartisan information because they are just starting their adulthood and need to stay informed about their civic responsibility of voting. Most students are following their parents' opinions and we are making it our responsibility to give them the resources they need to create their own opinions in their future adventures. It is important that we give them a starting, pay, starting place and I'm so glad that I got the opportunity to do that. This experience has taught me a lot about what I can do for democracy even without being able to vote. I have learned a lot about the election process and the importance of knowledge on this topic. This program has also made me question if I'm really sure about what I wanted to do in the future or if, I might sure, if it might shift because of how passionate I, tru I discovered I truly am about this topic. Next year when I'm a senior, I plan to continue as a student ambassador and plan a voter registration event for my peers as well. I would love to become more involved with the league, and I also want to promote the program to other students in more schools in Champaign County so we can continue to register as many students as possible.
hello, my name is Faith Kazadi. I am a junior and I am a student ambassador at the League of Women Voters. When my APUSH teacher, Ms. Early, first introduced the flyer, I became interested because I wanted to become a lawyer later on. And I figured this, be, this would be a great way to dip my foot into more knowledge about things like law and politics. But I also just believe that the right to vote is very important, especially for the back, black community. So when I learned about how many people didn't know about the impor importance of voting, I knew that participating in this program would give me the resources I need to figure out how to deal with this issue and spread more awareness about why more people should be voting. I've learned so much about voting in general through doing things like being an election judge and doing the registration event. I also became more informed and it felt really good to carry on that information to seniors so that they'd be able to apply it and have that knowledge. Like Nessa, I was also worried about the seniors dismissing us because we were juniors, but they respected us and they participated in the event. This event was much of a learning curve because Nessa, Nessa and I had to juggle a lot from making, having meetings to condense the presentation slides, to make them more current, designing posters and registration st stickers and scheduling and et cetera. But I felt that was all valuable and taught me a lot about how to juggle a big project like that. And overall, I feel like it came out very successful. And honestly, I feel it was the best way to explain to our seniors how they could be able to vote. And that was our goal. But the icing on top was to have Aaron Ammons come to our event. It was nice to see a representative from our community um, come and see our hard work, and he liked it a lot. If there's something I wish I had done differently, it'd be to inform more seniors about the event so that we were able to spread the message more. But the event was a great success, and I'm so grateful for the people who helped us along the way, especially Nessa, who made this a really fun event to plan. And I just wanted to say that I'm proud to be a student ambassador for the League of Women Voters. Good job, good job. Terrific girls, hey? Eh? Yeah. Thank you, Tracy. Appreciate the time. All right, so we know how the importance of voting. Students, you guys got to stay and take a picture with me. So, all right. So, okay, very impressive. <laughs> um, I don't want to put the other members of the team uh, on the spot, but uh, if Natalie, Leslie, or Paula, if you want to add anything, feel free to um, because I know you've been very involved with with helping the, supporting the students too. This, hi, hey. this is Leslie. Um, okay. I, wanna, I wanted just to say that um, just a couple of things. Our students uh, for the last two years have been amazing. The amount of time and effort that they put in, their commitment, their presentations. I worked with the folks in Urbana, um, so Kian and Eve and others, and, you know, I really appreciated how much time and effort and, and their, uh, the way that they handled their presentations were awesome. Um, I, I do want to say, I think there is an interest in, in it within the EOS group. We've talked about trying to reach out to other high schools. Uh, we have found it's easiest if we can have a connector or someone in that community or someone who can connect with them to help us get our foot in the door to get work with them and try to get exposure. Um, but for us to be able to do that as the League of Women Voters, we need more volunteers within the Yoast group. So we really do need more people to be that, uh, to work with that school. So for, like I worked with the Urbana folks uh, and Paula worked with Central. It really is helpful to have the one sort of go-to person that's working with the students, supporting them and also trying to corral the administrators a little bit more because it that sometimes is the biggest job is getting the administrators uh, to work with us and um, connect up and approve the event and things like that. Uh, Paula or Natalie, if, uh, you don't need to add anything, but unless you want to. No, okay. I just wanted so, to say that the the students are just incredibly impressive. I, it's been just so much fun to work with them. And I'm just, 
I'm just, uh, they work so hard and they're so organized and um, it's just been a great experience to see what the young people are doing. Okay, well, Prisha has posed some really good questions in the chat um, that um, if, if any of the three uh, students, we're almost at, at our um, time's gonna be up here shortly, but, um, uh, one of the first question is, is the name League of Women Voters a disadvantage? Um, do people have, you know, I don't know if you want to explain it, Trish, but I'm thinking, do people have perceived notions about what it is that maybe are not correct? And is, do you, have you gotten any pushback from your peers when you're talking about the so-called League of Women Voters when reality is that it's not just for women, it's for everybody? and men and women and anybody can join the League of Women Voters. Personally, I have not. I think actually having the name of like the League actually just helps with credibility. So you seem, well, you are more reliable because you have like this base and you have like more solidity behind what you're saying and presenting, but that's just what I've experienced. I don't know about the other ambassadors. Yeah, I don't know if it's like necessarily a thing that people are going to like take us less seriously, like in terms of registration and stuff. I feel like it might like deter people from applying if they don't like identify as a woman in like terms of becoming an ambassador. But I think like um, I think like if there's more like information and clarity in like the application process that like the League of Women Voters, it's like a it's historically been like for women and that's not necessarily the case anymore. I think like that can sort of become like a more inclusive thing, but I don't know. Um, I'll say I don't think it's been really, a, the name has been really an issue or anything, at least in my case. Um, I actually think it's a benefit, at least um, in Urbana, I feel like, um, when people in Urbana see that, they they feel like it's credible. Um, I don't know. That's at least in my case. From what I from what I talked to people. From when I talked to people, sorry. So as a follow up to that, do you think that because it the league did start. Uh, it was very much related to, uh, you know, getting the right to vote for women. Um, but do you think it's more important now, especially for us as we recruit your generation to become active members? Should we really focus more on the present and the future? That's Trisha's question. And maybe not so much talk about the history of the league, but really where we're going. Do you have any thoughts on that? Like when you're promoting the league? Mm -hmm. um, I would say, I think it's interesting to promote the history because it makes people more informed, but people might like teenagers are kind of like, if this doesn't apply to me, then like, why should I listen? So if you're appealing to like a younger group, you might want to be focusing more on the present and the future, mm -hmm. but I'm not sure what the other opinions are. That's just my perspective. Okay. There, I know we're almost out of time, but I would yeah. just like to really, um, um, you, you've heard from the students tonight and you can see how wonderful they are and how much um, I know for all, I'm gonna speak for all of the team members that this has been really rewarding for us working with the students. It gives us hope for our future and would really encourage all the league members, even if you couldn't work with us as a mentor to maybe volunteer to go into the high school because not only working with the students uh, who are student ambassadors, but it, it actually is very um, just it's it's just it's warms my heart when we see students registering to vote and asking questions and being engaged and and we truly know that you are our future. You are going to make the difference in the future elections. And so I think this is really what the league is all, we're really meeting the goals of the league by voter education and voter registration. And you can hear from the students tonight, like 
trying to educate the undergraduates. You know, um, some of the students who couldn't be here tonight want to reach out to the other schools over the summer themselves and try to make that connection. And we even talked about could on a day that they're off, could they go to Muhammad if we don't get a student ambassador from Muhammad for next year? So I think there's a lot of synergy and, and things going on. So I, I would echo what Leslie said, you know, we'll be at the annual meeting, Linda and I, all of our team trying to get more people to help us because we have 15, 16 high schools in the county and our goal is to have a student ambassador at every high school. So I'll stop there and I just wanted to say that. So thank you everybody, so. And so Trisha, um, I think you were gonna make some closing comments. Um, yeah, um, it, what the league has had a student program for many, many years, but it's never been nearly as, as effective and impactful as the program that Rhonda and Linda have designed and that you guys are um, putting out, are working with in your, in your schools and um, so I really want to thank uh, Lyndon and Rhonda for redesigning it and also for getting so such good active um, participants to, to, to give the message to um, kids in high school that uh, voting is important and you vote by registering and uh, you vote by learning about the issues and, and going into the, into the ballot booth. Um, or doing it at home, vote by mail, by knowing what you're voting about. I mean, that's what makes a difference in a democracy. So I really wanna thank you guys for volunteering and for doing this in your schools. And, and it is really an important aspect of what we need to do, which is um, send the message to, um, to the next generation so that, that democracy continues to, to work to be effective in our country. So thank you so very much. That's it. Okay, well, I, I think uh, we'll wrap up and I just wanna uh, thank Ian Panthen for being our Zoom operator, Teresa um, monitoring the chat and um, just wanna again, thank the Yossi leads team and especially our students and um, we are so grateful and we know that only good things, we will continue to see good things uh, in your future and, and uh, it's really a thrill to know that you're going to be staying involved. So anyway, every, everybody have a great evening and uh, we'll, you'll be hearing more about the annual meeting very soon about the uh, details of it. So, okay. Night. Thanks. Thanks, Eve, Keon and Janaki. Thank right. you.